What's going on everyone, MKD Ultra here, and today we are doing um, a different type of video, kind of. I recently just finished the amazing masterpiece of a series that is Hunter x Hunter 2011. And um, it's a it's a bit of a journey, right? It's 148 episodes, I believe. We are uh, we're here with Tier Maker. Um, do people do people like still make tier lists? Uh, I I, lo I love tier lists still. So I mean, if you want to see more? Feel free to let me know because I'll, I'll definitely be down and doing more. Um, but yeah, today's tier list is gonna be a uh, Hunter Hunter. So as you can see. I found one that said Hunter Hunter almost all anime characters tier list. So we're going to be ranking every character in Hunter Hunter. It says that they're roughly in order on how they appeared in the uh, in the anime. So I mean as you can see, I'll scroll down here for a little bit. We got our tiers S, A, B, C, D, E, and Ho! Oh! There's a there's a decent amount here. So I don't want to spend too much time um on the random characters, but uh yeah, I figured Let's just see where it goes. Let's rank every character in Hunter Hunter. First off, we got Gon, um, protagonist, the main the main character of the show. You know, uh, it, it, it's 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 gonna be a nice like it, it's Gon. How could you not love him? Um, as I said, protagonist. Yeah, I don't have. I don't think I need to explain it. I really don't think I do. Um, wow, this is so. This is gonna start just right at the beginning. So uh, Mito is next. Mito is Gon's aunt, um, and she doesn't play a very huge role, but uh, she's she's pretty cool. She's pretty cool. I'm gonna give her a B. I'm gonna give her a B. Next up, we got the sailor um, that took Gon from Whale Island to get. Um, I think he was on his way to the hunter exam, wherever place he was taking him there. Um, I have no problems with him. I'm, I'm gonna give him a solid C, just right in the middle. You know, he got him. He, he he did what he needed to do. He survived him from a storm too. I forgot about that. Um, a C's good. C's good. Next up, we got someone who was on the ship. I think. Um, this is probably someone. I think this was the guy that was like the clear like newbie. Like he did all the chores and stuff, and go and talk to him and. Did whatever. I don't really remember too much about him, so I'm gonna put him in the who category. Next is Karapika. Karapika is super, super dope, and if you only watch Hunter Hunter up to the York New arc, you'll probably put him in S, um, because he was badass in that arc. I mean, it's pretty sick. Um, I, I think I'm gonna put him in A for now. After I go through everyone, I'm gonna re redo this to really make it how I want it. But I mean, he just. He, they just left him out, you know what I mean? After York knew, I don't even remember... I don't even remember a time where he is shown again. I think they don't even include him in anything, so... <clears throat> Sorry. <sighs> okay. So next up, we got Leorio. Um, again, kind of took a back seat similar to Karapika, but he does actually make a return in the 13th Chairman arc. Um... So I'm gonna put him in A for now, but he, I think, I think he's good in A. I think he's good in A. Next up, we got these fox things. Um, they met these guys on the way to the hunter exam and had a little bit of a, a test with them. They can actually morph into people, and the test was to, I guess, test their ability on with their eyes or something. Um, seem to seem like pretty cool, uh, pretty cool creatures. I'm, I'm gonna put him in C. Even at the end, he does come back to. Uh, um, Turn him transform into Gota, I think uh, was his name. Um, whatever the uh, the butlers in the Zoldic uh, mansion. So I'm gonna give him a solid C, I think. Next we got Tompa. Tompa, I really didn't like. He really, really pissed me off. Um, but I'm not gonna put him in E for the fact that he does serve a purpose, right? He's the point of him is to break the newbies, and uh, the, there's there's a bit of some uh, some comedic moments with uh, the core the core four as I like to call them. Um, so I'm, I'm giving him a D. Not not terrible, but not bad. Next up, uh, we got this guy. This guy, I remember being like, he was super cocky because he was like, always like, analyzing everything in the Hunter exam, but he didn't even get past the first thing, which was just them running for a really long time. He couldn't keep up. Um, so E, I mean, he was pretty shit. Next up, we got Kilua. Um, I mean, if, if, he, if he's not, I didn't mean to scroll up that far. If he's not on your, if he's not an S for you, 
I, I don't know, bro. I don't know. Kilua, he's just always a treat. You know what I mean? It's it's always nice to see Kilua. Again, I don't think I don't think I have to explain that one. Next up, we got Hisoka. Uh, Hisoka is probably S on a lot of people's list. He's he's again he's at least A. You know, you don't really like him at first, and you start to kind of like him, but not really. You know what I mean? Like he's super interesting, and you like what he's on the screen, but you. I don't at least for me I just, I just don't necessarily like him though right like he's always he's always doing his own thing he's always uh like up to something do screwing somebody over um I'm gonna give him an a he's a great character though great character next up uh these are one of the guys <clears throat> these three here were in a group um I think I, I remember Kilo was scaring them off um I know who they are so it's not exactly who, but I mean, if you don't remember, I mean, there's no point to really put him in either, right? I mean, I don't know. Next up, um, I forget what this guy's name was, but he kind of reminds me of um, the ninja guy from um, One Punch Man. Uh, but this guy was really cool. He was in the first arc. Yeah, he was in the Hunter arc. And um, he played, he was actually, he excelled at pretty much everything. Like he was like a guaranteed he was guaranteed to like make it basically and he had a really cool fight with gone um where gone basically didn't necessarily break his spirit i mean he broke gone's arm but uh didn't break his spirit but kind of forced him to uh almost to not to give up i don't remember what exactly happened uh, but he was pretty cool i'll probably give him i'll probably give him a c for now i think that's fair next up we got this guy um i think I don't know who the hell this is, to be honest. This, I, it's, Kilua ki killed somebody in the Hunter exam on it with his one-on-one -on -one fight, causing him to be disqualified and not getting his Hunter license the first time around. Um, but I don't remember who really any of these people are. Um, at least these two. This guy I know was with Gon, I believe, and they got into a fight, and he ended up taking Gon's number, and then Kisoka killed him. Um, Again, he didn't really have too much. I can't base it off anything. This guy was the guy um, that had a bunch of... He was the snake tamer. For that fact, I'm going to put him in E because fuck snakes. Uh, next up, we got Ponzo, I believe her name was. Uh, she was pretty cool. She was trapped in the uh, the cave with Gon, Karapika, and Leorio. Um, she was just stuck there and basically told him to give up. And Leorio was going in there to uh, get her number because that was who he was assigned to get. Um, later, she's killed by the Chimera Ants. Um, but she was she was pretty cool, I think. Uh, I think maybe a C is fair for now. Next up, I forget who this guy's name was, uh, but he was pretty cool. He's not overly... Uh, strength wasn't really his strong suit. Uh, he was fast, and I believe he was a sniper of some sort. Um, pretty cool guy. He ends up getting killed by the Chimera Ants as well, so I think a C would might be fair, but again, this could probably change. This guy, I don't know who the hell this is. Actually, I think this might be the fake, like a like like a trap that was set for them. That was f to, to fake to try to fool them to think their instructor was fake or whatever. Um, but I don't really remember. This guy was one of the um, the first um, what is it administrators, I suppose, of the hunter exam. He uh, he was the one that did the running. Um, he had a, he had a, he had, a, he, had a, he had a cool style to him. So. And then uh, he's pretty cool to go in at the end, too. So no problems. I think I'm probably going to put him in B. Um, I think he's above all these characters. Next up, we got these two. Um, I think this girl's name was Mochi, if I remember correctly. I don't remember who this guy's name was. Um, but they were in the cooking portion of the Hunter exam. Um, I'm going to put these two as a package, basically. And I don't I don't remember too much about them. They were, they were, they were cool on screen. I guess I'll give them a C. Um, but again, that could change. Next up, we got Netero. And Netero is... I mean, he has a huge role to play in um, the Chimera Ant arc, and then especially even the 13th election arc, um, after he uh, has already passed away at that point. He has a huge effect on everyone else um, in the... the um, just as a hunter. Um, so, Netero... Uh, he's probably, like, at least an A. At least an A, for sure. Um, next up, we got Bean, I think his name was. Um, he He's like a receptionist at the Hunter um, 
the Hunter Association, but he's more than a receiver. He has a pretty important role. Um, I was pretty neutral on him. I don't think he stands out in any too much of a way, but uh, he seems to know what he was doing. Probably, maybe, I think I'm just leaving it C for now. Next up, um, these next characters here is the part where um, it's a it's a group portion of the Hunter exam, and each of um, the group that is formed is of the core four with Gon, Kilua, Kropika, and Leorio. And Tompo is also, also a part of their team. Uh, it's groups of five. And each of them fight one of these five, as we see here. Um, this first one here is with Gon, and it's the there's five five matches and the first one of three wins gets to move on um they're all prisoners or criminals or something like that and if they win they get like half of their sentence cut or even almost all of it or something like that um and then of course if the examinees win they get to move on so these five here um i know gone fought, fought him they did the candle little thing um he fought karapika and karapika basically murdered him <laughs> um basically almost killed him um, she fought Leorio, they did a like rock, paper, scissors thing. Um, he fought Killua, I believe, and I think Killua, I think it was him that Killua fought. It was one of these two, but I think it was him. And Killua, um, you know, in one quick movement steals, steals his heart out. Um, and I think whoever's left between these two um, faces Tampa, and Tampa, um, he gives up immediately. Um, so that causes a loss for the team. All these were pretty cool, but for the fact that if we don't get to know too much about them, other than their small little fight that they have, um, I'm just gonna put them in the who category because I don't think it's fair to really judge them. Next, we got, next up we got the announcer um, from the uh, Heavens Arena arc. She, uh, I thought she did her job well. I think she's probably like a C. Next we got Illumi. Um, Illumi, it sucks because he's he's a super he's a cool character but like he's not you know what i mean like he's not cool but he's entertaining to be honest he's kind of like hisoka in the same way but i don't think he has the same charm as hisoka um so he's definitely below hisoka but i think he's above everyone else um here so i think b is probably a fair place to put him next up she was the um i think she was the flight attendant um when they were flying to the next destination of the hunter exam i don't really know um so i'm simply just gonna put her in who this i have no idea who the hell this is this he definitely looks familiar but oh he was um he worked at the um the zoldic um thing or whatever he did too actually that's that's what he's from um i'll put them in C actually for now. I, I feel like I'm going to put a lot of people in C and then after the fact we'll just see what happens. Next up we got the Zoldic dog. Um, he's pretty sick. I don't really know where to put him. Is he really? I, I guess C. Next up we got Kilua's brother. I didn't like him at all. He uh, I don't remember. He kind of just, he doesn't really do too much. You know what I mean? He doesn't really do shit. I'm going to put him down there. Next we got Kilua's mom. Um, she annoyed me. E. Uh, next we got Gota. Gota was um, the one that did the coin game and everything, and then um, it was basically basically always looking out for Kilua. Um, so I'm gonna put him in B, and we're that's gonna do basically the same explanation um, for Canary as well. I think she's real dope. Um, next we got this is Kilua's little sister, but I don't remember her doing too much. She she did a request for the Phantom Thieves, I believe, the Phantom Thieves, the Phantom Trope. And um, I, and I don't remember what she does too much after that. I'm gonna put her in C for now, but we'll probably have to restructure that. Next up, we got Kilua's father. Um, I forget his name, but you know he's he was super strong, super cool uh, overall. Just a, a cool presence. I'm gonna put him in B for now. Um, he was real cool, but you know who was even cooler than him? Kilua's grandfather. Kilua's grandfather was dope. Like. He's he's obviously older, but he's like when he was fighting with uh, Netero for a little bit when they entered the Chimera Anarch together. Damn, like a memorable memorable moment. I'm gonna put him in A. I'm gonna put him in A for now. Um, next up, oh shit, was she the announcer? Oh, I think I got him mixed up. I think she's the announcer for the Heavens Arena arc. If so, who is she? I'm a, I'm a 
put her further down then. I'm, I'm gonna put her in C then, if that's the case. Next up we got, ah, oh, what was this kid's name? I cannot remember this kid's name, but he was cool. He, uh, Zushi, Zushi was his name? Um, he was cool. He he was uh, clearly frustrated that going to Killua were just natural born talents, and he was he was he was a natural born talent too, but just not on the same level and caliber as uh, going in Killua. Um, pretty cool character. I'm gonna put him in C, but like I said, that's probably gonna get reworked. Next we got Wing. Um, Wing taught uh, Wing taught going in Killua Nen, um, and he was just cool. He didn't seem like he was that powerful or anything, but and at first I kind of was like. On the fence about him, I didn't know if they could really trust him, uh, but he ended up being pretty cool. Uh, so I'm gonna put him in B for that. Next up, I think she was the ticket uh, puncher or like the receptionist, the person you go to sign up for Heaven's Arena. Um, I'm just gonna put her in who? I don't know too much about her. These three, now these three I remember because they harassed Gon Killua and Zushi and threatened Zushi as well. Um, and they basically just wanted to cheat their way up to the ranks so that they can get some fame and some money out of it. Um, didn't like any of them um, for that fact. I'm going to put them all in E. Next up, this was the guy that fought Hisoka, I believe. Um, and he was pretty cool. But he didn't do too much. Uh, I'm going to probably just put him in D because they didn't really use him. Next, I have no idea who this is. Absolutely no idea. Next up, we got Krolo. Krolo is the leader of the Phantom Trope. And uh, he's really only in the... Um, he's really only in the York New City arc. But he's such a cool character. He's such a... I think I might put him in S. Um, I haven't really read the manga. But I know that it includes him a little more, and um, not, I'm not, there There should be really no spoilers. Um, in the manga, Krolo and Hisoka actually do end up fighting, which was Hisoka's wish um, when they uh, exchanged for him, when Krapika exchanged for him um, to get going to Killua back. And uh, yeah, I just think he's super dope. His power is super cool. He can basically copy other people's abilities um, with the book that he has. He's literally a fan of Trump. Like, I don't know. He's just such a cool character. I'm probably going to keep him at us, but I think this is where I'm going to put him for now, at least. Um, next up, we got basically the whole Phantom Trope. Um, from here down to here. Um, all Phantom Trope members. Now, this is this is going to be a little hard because I think it's hard. At, I think it's already tough enough to try to rank the Phantom Trope members individually. But on top of that, now we got to put a fit him in with everywhere else. Um, I don't even know how to. I don't even know where to begin with this. I think we got to rework our C category. I think there's a lot in here that could be bumped down. Uh, so let me let me do that real quick. Okay, so I reworked it a little bit. Um, I think I'll put them in order um, going down after. Uh, but for now, I think I'm gonna leave it like that. But again, it could it could get reworked again. So let's start with these Phantom Trope members. Um, I don't even know the best way to approach this. Um, I guess we could pick out some of my favorites first. He, I'm gonna put him in D because I don't really like his ability. He doesn't really seem, he's able to control people, but other than that, he like, if he, basically if he fails at that, he fails at everything, he can't do anything else. And I didn't seem to be too uh, charming or anything. So I'm gonna throw him down there. Um, I did find, um, it's, I'm trying to remember all their names too. He was cool though. So he's at least a B. Um, she was real cool too. I'm gonna put her in B. He was a C. I liked. He just had the the wind up punch. I'm gonna put him in C as well. Um, he didn't really do anything. I'm gonna put him in D. She. I liked her a lot. I'm gonna put her in B as well. Ponzo. I remember her name. I didn't like her. Uh. Actually, I'm gonna put her in C. This guy didn't really like, and they didn't use at all either. Um, I guess I no, I didn't like him. I thought he was pretty boring and stale. Um, Uvigan was pretty, pretty sick. I won't lie. I'm gonna put him in B. I don't even remember what. Oh, she or 
this person, I don't know what gender it is, um, was able to track them and put like, it doesn't really matter. Next up we got the person that taught uh, Karapika Nen. He j I don't know who he is. Like I, like I do know, but like, actually I'm gonna put him in who because like I do know, but like, really, like who is he? Like what, the, he never shows up again. Um, next we got the the person, um, these were a lot of the people, all, actually all these people. I think, yeah, these one, two, three, four, five right here were um, the group that was put together by whoever hired them. Um, this was Kurapika's group that he was with uh, during the um, the auction and everything like that in the York New City arc. Um, this was the group that he was hired to. Um, so with that said, a lot of them are actually pretty forgettable. Um, he trained dogs. I think that was his nen. I cannot remember who that, what she did. I think... I have no idea what she did, dude. I have no idea. I can't remember. This guy wrote poems. <laughs> this is pretty... And he was bad at writing, which makes his nen pretty bad. This guy... Just didn't really do shit. Melody. I'm gonna give Melody a C. She's the best out of the group. Um, next up, okay, so this this was who hired them, that's right. This was their boss and this was his daughter. Um, and she was actually really, really cool. She could um, basically tell people's future and he would profit off of her abilities, which is pretty shitty, but he actually did ca care about her. So I'm gonna give him a D just for that. Next up, no idea who this is, literally no idea. Um, same here, no idea who this is. This guy, um, he helped Gon and Killua sell something. They needed money, um, I think, for something. And he helped them with money, which is pretty dope. So I'm gonna give him a C for that. Uh, these three <laughs> were the three that fought uh, Uvigan, I believe. I think it was these three. Um, they were called, they had like a cool name and they, they kind of hyped them up to like be really strong, but they got wrecked. They got absolutely demolished. Um, so for that, that lack of anything, I'm gonna just throw them in E. I mean, you could probably put them in who, but they actually did have cool titles. I just can't remember. Next up, we got these guys. I don't, I don't know who that is and I can't even see who that is. Even if I look, it's hard to tell. Um, this looks like an auction guy i don't know who that is okay so now it looks like we're getting into the creed island arc um so basically from the characters we have now this covers the hunter arc and um the heavens arena arc and the phantom trope arc also the um the zoldic family arc if you want to include it um for anime well i guess this is an anime list so you would have to include it so next we're getting into the greed island arc here i think it actually started with this guy or maybe some of these um, not too sure. Somewhere in this area is when York New ends and Greed Island begins, though. Um, and this guy, what he helped Gon and Killua initially in the game. I think he was like a leader of the team they were in or something. Um, I th he was pretty strong and he knew pretty much the ins and outs of the game. So I, I think a B might be fair for him, but he could actually go lower. This guy, I just remember being really annoying and cocky. I think he ends up dying, um, but I don't really know too much about him. This guy, I didn't like, but he's actually the person that can undo Nen. The Nen, um, what's it called? Exorcist, um, that ends up helping Krolo, which is actually kind of cool. The, he's, he kind of he kind of plays in neutral, um, so I think I'm going to put him in C for now. Next up, we got... The, I think there was another... Okay, so there's two. Um, they're kind of like the... They kind of set the rules of the game. Uh, the programmers of the game. Uh, they, like, register people. Um, they're kind of just there to uh, do whatever. So, for that, I, I I know they're twins. I can't remember the difference of them, so... I mean, I'm not going to put them in who, because I do know who they are, but I just don't remember too much about them. No idea who the hell this is. This guy wanted to trade with Gon and Killua a lot, but he just kind of seemed like, oh, I don't know. This guy didn't like. Uh, this guy's the bomber. There's also two other bombers, which are right here. Um, and uh, 
I hated them. I hated them. I thought they were very stupid villains. Actually, this guy, no, he goes up. He goes up a notch. He helped Gon and Killer with his, their training. He was kind of like a psychopath killer, and uh, he was basically forced to help train them for the entire time. Uh, but I believe this person was one of the bombers, if I remember correctly. Uh, let me look real quick to see if there was an, any other ones. I don't believe so. There were three bombers, though, and he was certainly one of them. I think that was... Yeah, I don't know if they even have the other bomber, unless it's him. And it could be. But I don't think so. I don't know. Next, we got Bisky. And Bisky, oh my god. I love Bisky. Uh, I'm sure anyone that has seen Hunter x Hunter can agree with me there. Bisky is an easy ask for me. I was so excited whenever she came on screen. Super cool mentor to go and kill her. Um, she's really cool in, of course, the Great Island arc where she's introduced and plays the biggest role. But she actually comes back for the ant, the Chimera ant arc. Helps train Gon and Killua again. And she wears this super cool winter outfit. Uh, I'm going to show it on screen. Um, and uh, it, she's just, I love her so much. She's so great. And she just makes the show that much better. A perfect character to add. She's definitely an S. She is one that I'm definitely not going to put lower than an S. She is an S for sure. Um, next up, this was another person that helped Gon and Killua, but I know he played a decent role, um, especially in the dodgeball game, because he could uh, he could change his nen ability. It's not letting move up. Okay, he could change his nen abilities and such. Um, I think I'll put him in D for now, uh, maybe even borderline C, but he didn't really have that much of an impact on me. So I said we got Razor. Razor was a super super cool. Um, A super cool technically villain uh he was there to he was friends he's friends with jing um so he was actually there to almost help gone um but he's kind of the villain like the final boss that they have to beat uh, but he was actually really really dope so i think i i really enjoyed that dodgeball game so for that fact i'm gonna put him in b as well next up i think she just gave them information on how to get the card that they were looking for the last card which they had to go through razor to obtain um it's so yeah i mean forgettable i don't know who this is or actually no these two were friends of jing um but they really only showed up towards the end and i can't remember too much about them so i'm gonna just put them in who for now next we got kite kite um it sucks as we see him late but i think kite's at least an a for me kite is a super skilled hunter and he basically serves as almost like a father figure in a way to go on and um and basically kind of kind of like sparks inspiration for going to even become a hunter and pursue uh pursue his father he's a student he was a student under jing and uh, becomes super skilled because of that obviously and um unfortunately of course you know he is killed by uh pito in the chimera ant arc but he's a great character and one thing i do kind of have a complaint about um, about the 2011 adaptation is that in the first episode in the very first chapter of the manga i think the first episode of the night the 90s uh series kite is immediately shown in like a flashback type of thing then we kind of get that scene way further down the line in the chimera and arc but it doesn't have as much as an impact having it right at the beginning um to really show that connection or that um that how why Gon has such strong feelings for Kite, um, so they don't really show that in the 2011 series. But um, we, I'm not I can't complain too much. So Kite I think is easily an A for me though. Next up we got the Chimera Ant Arc Queen. Now I thought that she was gonna be like a really really like I thought she was gonna be the main villain of the arc, but she's not. She just gives birth to the main villain of the arc. Um, but you know other than that not too special. I think it's a solid D. Next up, these uh, people here, I think, I think just these four, but it could, no, I think it's just these four, um, are all basically buddies of Kite, um, they were all neutral to me, didn't really, uh, she played a little bigger bit of a role, so I think I'm going to put some of these that I don't really remember uh, down here, this guy, he, this guy just looks cool, so of course he gets a bit of a, I don't, I actually don't remember who this is, and I don't remember who this is as well. Um, this is Colt, and this is also Colt. Um, it, it's it's pretty sad. In the Chimera and Arc, this is the family that um, 
they basically first show and they kind of focus on almost like the main uh, family that you see from becoming human, transforming into chimera ants through uh, the queen's process of um, breeding and all that. So, I mean, it's hard. Like, I don't... Colt was... I mean, like, th these are basically the same. This is Colt. Colt before in human form, Colt after in uh, ant form. So, I, I don't know. Colt actually in ant form, he's actually pretty dope. I'm going to put him in at least B for that. Um, in human form, I mean, it's still Colt. So, I'm going to put him in B there. Um, his sister was... He protected her so much. She's just this little, this little girl sh that shouldn't... You know, you don't want to see children get murdered uh, by these horrific ants um and then her their 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 mother i guess i gotta put them all together right it feels bad separating them um she did, never gave up on looking for her, her kids she lost sleep was in a horrible condition um constantly trying to look for her kids and then when her village was reattacked by the ants um she protected somebody else's children um and colt actually was one of the squadron leaders in that uh, little raid i suppose and um noticed her but couldn't really understand why and therefore left her and the child alone um but just her determination gives her um a pretty actually i'm gonna drop these two and see they're not on colt's level but they're respectable next up we got this penguin guy this penguin guy is basically like the uh the studio these two basically like carry the knowledge of the chimera ants um and then are just gone uh just just done with once uh once the king arrives so I mean, for that fact, I think I'll just throw them in D. They played a bit of a role, but nothing uh, nothing too crazy. Next up, we got this... Uh, what was his name? I think his, his name was literally like Bro or something like that. Um, I'm going to put him... Actually, uh, I think I'm going to put him in C. He, uh, he ends up switching up towards the end, and I, I, I like that. I, it seems to enjoy a bit of the human life after uh, the ants disperse, so he was, was kind of cool. This guy, no idea who he is. Cheeto, Cheeto was an interesting character. Uh, I, I guess I'll give him a C. He, he was entertaining to watch on screen. He was a bit of an idiot. Um, the fastest Chimera ant out of all of them, uh, but he was pretty cocky and didn't really think things through all the way, but... He played a decent uh, comedic relief and played into a couple cool fights, so I'll give him a C. She, um, she was the one that had, she has a huge uh, tail, like a scorpion type tail, and she is the one with the phantom trope, um, actually invades her colony because she, all the ants dispersed to try to become kings and queens or whatever of their own, uh, sort of colonies in a way. And she goes, the one that she goes to is near the home of a lot of where the trope members grew up. I don't think it's all of them, but most of them. Um, and they infiltrate and basically just save the rest of their village pretty much from them. Um, so she was kind of cool. I'm, I'm going to put her a D actually. She wasn't that cool. I, I lied. Uh, next up we got, ah, what was his name? He was the chameleon, but he actually ends up helping going to Killua and the others in their uh, journey in the Chimera Ant arc. He has a pretty cool ability in which he turns invisible, and so does anyone he touches. So he played actually a pretty big role, and he was cool. Uh, he was a cool guy, so that's a B for me. This guy, uh, he goes off to become a king of his own, um, and it's just a real, a, a real, you know, arrogant type of person uh, that Kite ends up killing, um, rightfully so. He, he easily in need. Um, these two are just the people with him, I believe, his subordinates, they were in a group of three. Um, they all deserve it. Next up, we got this guy. This guy, I don't know. They kind of, they made him seem kind of like a big deal, but I just didn't, I never really liked him. He just, he drinks this liquid and he spits it at people and he can kill people. He was a former assassin and uh, he feels bad for what he did, but I, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe D. Maybe he's not down by these but he wasn't he wasn't great uh next up we got this one this one's the person that actually fights Kilua and is the first ant to discover um using nen because of the basically the beat down that he gets from going to Kilua. um can't really say i liked him um i'm gonna probably throw him down here as well he also kind of screws this over because he teaches everyone else how to use nen by punching them and uh, awakening their pores as well so i'm gonna put him in e for that 
This guy started a bit of com comedic relief. He was basically um, a simp for the scorpion girl that we had discussed before. Uh, but I, I thought he was really, really kind of disturbing, so I'm gonna put him in E. I didn't, I, I wasn't a fan of him. Uh, next up, we got the. I'm so sorry, I don't like remember any of these names too. Um, he was another ant that wanted to have his own sort of kingdom. Um, again, kind of cocky in a way, and did a lot of shady stuff. So try like go find people's back type of thing. Uh, so I think I'm gonna give him a D. I think that's fair. This guy just kind of like. He kind of screwed a lot of people over because he could basically see everyone with his dragonflies. Uh, so I would give him E just because he annoyed me. This girl, she was uh, she was pretty cool. She was uh, she was originally with the tiger guy, and then uh, she ends up kind of disbanding that and just kind of living her own life. And she gets some she gets some fortune out of it in the end. Um, I don't, she's probably not on the same tier as all these people, but I think I'm gonna put her in C at least. No idea. I think he was just the cook, the food preparation person for the ants. Uh, who? Next we got Pito. Uh, Pito is one of the royal guards. Um, the first one to be born, I believe, as well. And I th just think her presence, her being in the series. I'm gonna give her. I'm gonna give her an A. I think she's a really good character. A lot of people obviously don't like her because of uh, her killing kite. Uh, and but she was just. I don't know. She. Uh, I just, I just, I just thought that she was a cool character. I mean, there's not much to it. Um, the, I, I think the most interesting of the Royal Guards for sure, and um, you know, just an interesting character. Next, we are getting into the um, the new hunters that were recruited for this mission. These one, two, three, four. These five here, um, and we're kind of coming close to the end here. Um, he, I'm gonna give a. C because he actually his net ability is really really cool. He has um he gives um he makes these portals that you could basically teleport to and he ends up infiltrating the um estate the main area where the um chimera ants are located but he he feels Pito's uh nen ability um her the evil the malice within it and he dips he backs out of the fight and is just done with it. Has no, wants nothing to do with the fighting and basically just backs out. Um, it has like a breakdown essentially. Um, so he still decides to help a little bit, which is cool. But I, yeah, I mean, he didn't, he didn't. He wasn't about the action, and he got to be about the action. You know what I mean? Next, we got Morel. Morel is easily at least a B. Uh, I'll probably gonna put a B. I think B is fair. Um, he has a really cool ability uh the deep purple i love whatever he said he had this such this such a cool voice um and he was just he was just really cool he carried that big uh smokers thing um and he just he just constantly impressed me so at least it'd be i thought he was, he was pretty cool next we got palm palm um i thought she was already pretty cool to begin with and then on top of that she ends up turning into an ant but is able to snap out of the, um, her ant instincts, I suppose, and basically regain all of her human memories and everything like that. Uh, she has a really cool ability as well, um, so I think a B is a fair place for her. Next up, we got uh, Shoot, and Shoot is uh, one of the pair that helps, um, goes on this mission, and um, I, I think I'm going to give him a C. He, uh, he's a student of Morel, and... Um, he was cool. He's he, he at first you definitely don't like him. Doesn't really do too much. Then he kind of steps up, shows his colors, and uh, he has a bit of a uh, redeeming qualities to himself. So next we got Knuckle. Knuckle I ended up not liking at first, but I, I really, I really, I really grew to love him. You know, he's he's a good guy. He's a bit of a softy, uh, as much as he doesn't want to admit it. Um, and he's just there to protect his friends and give it his all. Um, he's actually kind of a somewhat he doesn't really teach going to Kilowood too much but he's the main one that they fight um when they want to get the um the token or whatever from knuckle and shoot um and the competition for netero to see who would accompany them on their mission in the end everyone ends up going but um you know at least for the first um month or whatever it is before they can enter or when they they we're not allowed to enter ngl when they leave for uh uh, East Corteo. I said we got Poof. Poof was one that really annoyed me, but I actually thought his, as a character, he's really, really interesting. I'm probably gonna put him an A for that fact. Um, probably lower A. Um, 
but he he had his own motives and t t kind of everything but like everything he did was for the king you know what i mean um and you might you may be annoyed with him but that fact makes him a good character alone you know he knew what he was doing and uh i think he's just a, he's, he's another solid uh royal guard next we got the last royal guard um God, i cannot i horrible with names i think i'm gonna put him in c i he was the least intriguing um based on everyone there um you know he's a royal guard and he's he's pretty powerful he has a knuckle morale kilua shoots all of them end up fighting him at some point and they're never able to fully kill him um he ends up dying from other circumstances later but um i, I don't know he just it was the least interesting for me out of those three Next up, we got Merrim, uh, the king himself. And look, if you, I don't think if you don't put him in S, I, I don't know. He he's the king Chimera Ant. He has huge, huge character development, um, becoming this ruthless, very primal, instinctual king. Has no real regard for human life, and he becomes a bit of a human himself, and uh, has some character development. Kind of changes his ways. Uh, very interesting philosophy and interesting mindset on Merrim. Um, easily the, probably easily the strongest character here, or um, at least the most threatening. And, um, you know, 60 episodes seems like a lot, but I, I, I do wish that I could have seen him for more. Um, so I, he's an easy S for me. I have no idea who or what this even is, uh, so I'm going to throw it there. Same here, not sure who you are. Same here, not sure who you are either. Next we've got Ikago, and Ikago is someone I thought was gonna be really, really annoying at first, uh, but he ends up be becoming friends with Killua and actually is uh, a really great friend. Um, very strong motives and morals, and uh, he's just, he's, he's, a, he's a great addition, even though it seems like he wouldn't be. Um, yeah, he also has an interesting little uh, kind of a bit of an arc himself um he kind of you know has an important role and he doesn't want to let his new friends down um so he's, he's pretty admirable in that aspect so i think he's a b for me these two these two were um the two nen users that basically abuse the shit out of killua um their nen ability is to um he makes darts he turns his he, they're in a different location like a bar area and um, his non-ability is basically to turn his opponent into a dartboard um, not literally but he throws his darts onto a dartboard and swordfish are then speared through his opponent based on what area he hits on the dartboard um, if he wins the game of darts they end up they die if he loses um, him and his sister die I believe is how it worked uh, pretty interesting nun ability, but really just cocky assholes. You know what I mean? And uh, Killua at the end fakes them out and takes both their head off. Very satisfying. Hated the characters. Um, I, I put them at the bottom. Next up, we got Komugi. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. She see, she was so sweet from the beginning. She's she's blind. She's the Gungi player, of course. And is the basically the main reason why. Merrim even has a change of uh, a change of heart, I suppose. Um, so she's an easy A for me. Honestly, I think borderline S, but I don't want to. I, I don't think I can do that. I don't think I can. Uh, but easily an A for me. She's one of my favorite characters in the series, and seeing her development with Merrim and of course um, their heartbreaking, truly heartbreaking death. Uh, together at the end is uh it's painful to see but it's also kind of quite beautiful so easily an a for me um next up we got this was the person that he kind of like he kind of did his own thing um and had his own he was kind of like that guy where like ah, this fucking snitch like he was always around always uh trying to trying to benefit himself in any way possible um, was not afraid on snitching on people, not afraid to play dirty, and um, he ends up actually having some pretty decent, uh, a pretty decent character arc. Um, especially with Ikago is a big reason for that. Um, they kind of share a touching moments together, so I think a C is a fair place for him. 
Next up is the, he was basically the prime minister of the place that um, they took over. I think this was the actual guy. Yes, he, he was. Um, so I'm put him here, but this this guy here basically ran the show, um, was the one pulling all the strings and everything. So he, um, there's nothing to like about him, basically. There's nothing to like about him. Look at those eyebrows. Next, we got Kite in his um, second form, I suppose is what you would call it. Um, and it's Kite, but like not, it's just not the same Kite. I'm going to put him just solid C or her solid C, um, cause it's kite soul in a different body, but like, you don't really, she doesn't get too much screen time, um, cause she's literally like growing up, and um, I, I don't know, I mean, I, I, I guess it's kite, but it, it, it could, she could definitely go up if she has the same like combat ability and is as cool as kite, um, but for now I think maybe a C, maybe a B actually, cause it is kite, uh, but he definitely drops a tier just because I don't know what she's able to do now. Next up, oh, this was so this was such a such a sad moment. This is little uh, little Reina here as a chimera ant. Uh, she returns to the village with her with her mom, and um, it, of course is instantly brought in by the rest of the village as well. Very heart heartwarming moment. She's not able to talk in her ant form, or at least didn't until she saw her mother and spoke again. Uh, super sad moment, um, but I'll, I'll give it a C. This, okay, maybe I mix it up. This was def This was certainly the prime minister guy. I don't think these are the same people, so I'm gonna throw him back down in who. This guy, I mean, he's just off on his own living life now. Here we go. This was the person. I'm. I'm so sorry. I can't remember names for shit. Um, but he was the vice president of the Hunter Association, and uh, after that, he ends up winning the 13th Hunter election. Of course, the 13th uh, chairman election. Excuse me. And uh, you could you could clearly see he just does things to screw with people. If if it's not fun for him, there's no point in him doing it, whether it benefits him or not. As long as he gets a kick out of it, that's all that matters. Um, he's actually pretty similar to Netero in that way, but um, I think he could be. Um, um, his name was Partisan, Parison, Parison, something like that. Uh, Partisan, and uh, yeah, he, he he could he could play a role in the future, especially now that he's chairman. Um, actually, he stepped down from chairman, so see, sorry, he won the election of that step down, so we'll see, we'll see what happens with him, but he's, he's definitely strong, he's, I think he's, I think he's definitely hiding some of his abilities. Uh, this was the, uh, he was in the top four for the running of the next chairman, um, if you hadn't already told, we are in the final arc now, the 13th chairman election arc, um, we have officially left the Chimera Ant arc, um, so we're on the last arc now, almost done here. Um, so he, it's hard, it's very hard because we didn't get to meet a lot of these. Um, he's a crime hunter, which is actually pretty sick, um, but he didn't really do too much to really gather any attention from me. So a C for me. Next up we got this guy, like I know who he is, but I like, I, I don't know too much about him. So he's gonna go in the who category. Um, she is the rabbit hunter. Um, she was the announcer for the the entire um chairman thing as well uh i don't honestly don't know too much about her but she was entertaining to be on screen uh, i thought she was a good announcer and she's pretty cute so i think a b is fair this i have no idea who that is she i do know who she is she was on the zodiacs uh she was one of the zodiacs i'm assuming that's probably who uh, this is the uh, as well but she had a snake um for that reason Actually, for that reason, I'm gonna give her E. Similar to if this guy, if this guy's in it, where's he at? Uh, where the fuck is he at? Oh yeah, if this guy's in here for snakes, she's in there for snakes. I don't fuck with snakes, so it's gonna be an E. Uh, this guy, I don't know what he did. This guy, don't know what he did. A lot of the zodiacs they didn't really um, explain, so I have no true opinion on any of them. Uh, we got Cheetle here. Cheetle um is. She plays basically the role of the basically the clear-cut candidate. Um, 
she she's gonna make change for the better it's so it seems and um she uh is the one to take over as chairman um i did find her a little annoying at times but i'm also very interested to see where she goes from this especially as i said being the chairman now the 13th chairman so she's got a lot of weight on her so shoulders but i think out of anyone that was in the running she's probably the one that can handle it so um i think it's probably a b next up we got jing and jing uh, like you might want to put him lower because uh because of of course he kind of dipped out on going said uh see you later but um he's he's a he's obviously a great hunter uh, very skilled very smart and you know the the moment at the end when going actually gets to meet him and they get to talk a little bit it's it's, it's, it's nice to see it's nice to see um the, the bond that they kind of connect as they should being father and son um and him being away for 12 13 years however old going is maybe 14 15 something like that towards the end of the series at least um you know i, I don't think i can put him any higher than b at least for now um but he is a uh, he's an interesting character to say the least next up we got alika and alika is kilua's sister um and kind of similar to Kamugi in the way that she was to Meruem, Alika's kind of that to Killua. Um, he, she, she gives him a, a, a pretty, a pretty drastic character change in a way, and gives Killua. Um, Killua always kind of seemed, was well, always alone. You know what I mean? Basically until he met Gon. Um, and, and also with Crap Gun Loreorio, but of course it's most apparent in Gon. And um, he never really had anything to look forward to, anyone he truly cared about, and, and not really a reason to live. Uh, he was just doing things for the heck of it uh but alika is uh he ends up caring a lot for her and basically saving her from the um discrimination of the family towards her um because they're scared of how powerful she is and the ability that she has um, very cool her alter ego i suppose um which they call nanaka um I, I thought she was a super cool character and she's super sweet super cute you just wanted her to be happy uh, you could easily get on Killua's side on why everyone wanted to abuse her for her power. Not literally abuse her, but, um, you know, to, to try to control her power and everything. And uh, she's just real sweet. So uh, that's an A for me, at least. Okay, we're finally down to the last little bit here. Um, this is one of another butler at the Zoldic household. Um, she kind of annoyed me, but she definitely definitely has experience under her belt uh, i think i'm gonna put her in c along with her granddaughter as well um no no nothing to really hate against them they're just not super interesting by any means um i don't know who this is these actually i think these are all candidates that were um trying to become chairman um and they don't really get too much of an introduction or anything so uh yeah to finish it all off we throw them all in the who category because we don't really know too much about them. Uh, so now I'm going to do my final arrangements to try to put this in somewhat of a decent order, and uh, we'll get we're, we'll go over our list then. So I'm sure by you can you can already tell the length of this video is uh, a bit lengthy, but that's what happens when you rank literally every character in Hunter x Hunter. Um, so well, you see the who's here. I didn't actually put them in a specific order because uh, that would take too long. And I don't really want to do that right now after recording this for about an hour. So you can see the E category here. Um, I don't think nobody really had to go over too much. You can kind of see uh, here in the D category as well. Again, these are just people. These are people that I didn't really like at all. These are people that eh, they had maybe something that I enjoyed about them. Um, other than that, they were nothing too special. C category, just kind of average. You know, they had some some good, some bad, just kind of in the middle. B category, uh, more good than bad. Uh, maybe they didn't have enough screen time. Maybe there was something about them I didn't necessarily love. Um, all in all, good characters though. Next up, we got A, and uh, which as you can see here, and then S. I moved it around a little bit. Actually, uh, Hisko ended up getting the bump up to S because he just brings that sensation when he's on the screen you know what i mean he just brings that like what is going through his head you know what is he gonna do next um kind of similar to meruem i don't think he's as strong as meruem in that category but um he he's almost there for another reason too like 
the just the the pure mystery behind it. i don't know he's just a compelling character um similar i believe corlo should be up there bisky is easily up there no way she's anywhere else um i think Merum stays up there and of course going to killua i think are probably my favorite duo in all of anime um especially as hunter hunter being now a top three uh, anime for me after watching it i loved everything about it would give it a 10 out of 10 if you haven't seen hunter hunter i highly recommend um if you haven't seen it though and you watch this i don't not sure what you're doing because uh you know there were spoilers in this so i hope uh you know what just at, go at your own risk you know i'm not here to judge you if you watch all the way to the end um i appreciate it. if you skip to the end just to see the rankings i appreciate that as well um but yeah if you want to see more tier lists be sure to comment down below maybe a different series of all the characters maybe a lot shorter of a tier list maybe doing shows instead of uh, characters but i hope you did enjoy um even if you don't agree feel free to leave your thoughts down below i want to know your favorite hunter hunter character and who you would put in that s tier as uh, your top favorites i think this is fair i think i'm pretty satisfied with this list thank you all for watching um make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already and uh take it easy i'll see you all in the next one